Eu vou conversar agora com o pesquisador Ruta Nustmer. Ele é da Universidade do Sul da Califórnia e está em Ribeirão Preto para uma parceria com a Universidade de São Paulo, especificamente com a Faculdade de Medicina de Ribeirão Preto e com o professor e doutor Wilson Araújo. Os dois participam de um grande projeto aqui no Hemocentro de Ribeirão Preto. Tudo bem, Ruta? É, o que é que você faz em Ribeirão Preto? Right now I am uh, basically introducing some of the things that I've been doing at the university, uh, sharing my knowledge in bioinformatics and also in cancer genetics, and I hope to build a nice relationship with the university here for long-term uh, projects. So essentially setting up a collaboration. Você integra o grupo do professor Wilson Araújo da Faculdade de Medicina. Se o projeto for aprovado, o que será feito em Ribeirão? The the focus that I see, the vision that I see is that I I feel in this time there is a vast need to to understand and analyze large amounts of data that are being produced now because of the the advancement in technology and also the 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 knowledge that we are gaining in the genome of, of our cells. So I see a, an advancement in training young individuals here at the university in the area of bioinformatics, in particular in the application of bioinformatics into in, in, in the order to understand the genomics and genome or the epigenome of human cells. And in particular, looking at this in a context of cancer or diabetes or obesity. And the relationship that the university has with the School of Medicine, the Faculdade de Medicina, is very important because the, the, the communication, the collaboration between basic researchers and clinician that relationship will be very important for the future of personalized medicine. To be able to translate the information from the patients to the informaticians or to the researchers, to be able to take that information, analyze it, and specialize those particular analysis for specialized patients, and we can take that information back to the clinician. I think that is where I see the future uh, of genomic medicine, and I feel that my contribution in collaboration with Wilson and also with the university, I, I see that as being an advancement, um, actually the long-term goals. Mas um dos temores é que essa informação do genoma possa trazer também prejuízos para a pessoa. Como é que você analisa isso? So this gets into a very philosophical and ethical concern that a lot of people, including people in the United States, have regarding uh, personalized medicine and understanding one's genome. The problem with where we are headed towards, which is this personalized medicine, is that we do not know, we do not understand a lot that is going on in the genome. So if I were to extract someone's uh, genome, and analyze it, and I say, well, there is a region here that may, sus may be susceptible to a disease. May, that's the most important thing. What, what do we do now? We do not understand yet what this actually causes. So it's, it is a very difficult uh, thing to, to cross in, in this area of, of personalized medicine. But there are still some information that we do know. And when the person is, is aware of the risk, it can help not only the individual to adjust their lifestyle, but also it allows the clinician to also tailor the treatment for that particular individual. And it, and it can, it, it gets into the idea of preventive medicine. If you know that you have a risk for a certain disease and you're made aware of that, you may alter your lifestyle that can then help you possibly prevent the disease coming in the future. Or maybe use certain methods to 
treat the disease. These are what we feel will help uh, if we gain information from uh, one's genome. But of course, we are very in the very beginning stages, and lots of things will emerge from this idea. Uh, I think hand in hand with understanding the personal genome is also to understand genomic medicine, and meaning understanding the function of the genome which is where we need to get to um, is what is lacking right now. Nos Estados Unidos, uma pesquisa dessa olhando em sites custa algo em torno de 100 dólares. Qualquer pessoa pode fazer isso nos Estados Unidos, pode buscar o seu próprio genoma? Yeah, you just you have to go to the company and pay them 100 dollars. They send you a package. Uh, and the package will have a Q-tip or a swab and you take out the cells from inside your mouth, or even nowadays you can take it from uh, from a drinking glass and then send it out for sequencing. Pela sua experiência, quando o que acontece nos Estados Unidos pode acontecer no Brasil? É uma grande quantidade de pessoas fazendo esse essa análise. We have the technology, the the equipments, the machinery is all available. What is lacking is the know-how, meaning the ability to uh, extract that information, basically to understand the information. That is something that uh, I am hoping that we can build in the future to, get, to gain a better insight in one's genome. Because nowadays, uh, the price of sequencing, which is what we do to understand one's genome, has dropped exponentially in the last 10 years. 10 years ago, it would cost almost $100,000 or more to sequence one's genome. It's coming down to almost uh, $1,000 now to do one person's entire genome. And what these companies do, instead of doing whole genome sequencing, they do targeted sequencing. And that's why they can drop the cost even further. And so this technology is available. It's, it's just a matter of time, I think before it comes here to Brazil. But the other problem is the infrastructure, the ability to understand that information and making those kind of associations. Bom, o que é que vocês uh, estudam no centro que você trabalha nos Estados Unidos? Now I am working with uh, Jerry Kotzia and we are now studying prostate cancer. And I am integrating the genome of uh, prostate cancer cell lines with genome-wide association studies and we're looking at SNPs or these individual nucleotide polymorphisms uh, in the entire genome that may confer function and a, a better understanding of how the disease progresses. And so that is my aim for my current work at the university. The difference between what I did in my PhD and what I'm doing now currently is now I am trying to understand the function of the genome. Whereas before, I was trying to identify patients that have a very unique global profile. I'm now being trying to focus my studies and to see whether what regions of the genome confer function. And this will allow us to have better assessment of risk and better treatment protocols for patients if we can understand regions that may be deleterious or change in a person's cancer genome. Se eu fizer o meu genoma e identificar que eu tenho probabilidade de câncer de próstata, uh -huh. eu posso impedir a doença? I, I think we're too early and uh, we're very immature in this field to actually prevent cancer. We can understand that maybe the development of cancer and these things that I'm studying if we can identify them, uh, we may provide a risk assessment, a probability that this may happen in one's individual. But this ha has a lot of other influences, the environment, the diet, everything that we consume around us also has a big influence. And this interaction with the genome is the kind of relationship that I'm trying to study. But to say whether this can prevent one's cancer I, it's not an easy question for me to answer, and I, I, I cannot tell you with certainty 
where that is because we're still very immature. That's why we need to advance science so that we can better understand these things in the future. 60 years ago, we found the structure of the DNA. We discovered and uh, characterized the structure of the DNA. Before that, we did not know what the, the structure of the DNA looked like. Francis Crick and, and, and James Watson were the first persons to identify this. Since then, we have made a lot of advancement in our understanding of genetics and the genome. And at the same time, technology has advanced. Computers, uh, biotechnologies, in the last 20 or 30 years. The influences of biotechnology in the area of genomics has exponentially increased our understanding of genomics. But it has only advanced us in the last 10 years. If we had the technology that we have now 50 years ago, I think that 60 years of knowledge, maybe we would have a better understanding and a better methods to prevent cancer. But we are now in the very early stages. And my uh, hope, and I, and I think my optimism, lies in the, f in the area of computational biology and technology where the prices of all these technologies are dropping very fast, which is better because then researchers can go and ask for money from the institutes that can allow us to, to, to process all of this information and to do the analysis that are required that we did not have 50 or 60 years ago. So that's why I say that we are immature, because we still haven't had enough time to understand the genome. We are just scratching the surface right now. And that's where everyone is right now in the United States and uh, around the world. And I think the, Im the technologies that Wilson and the university are bringing here is a very good first step. Um, it's better to do it as soon as possible than later because a lot of centers around the world have already embraced this technology and it's just a matter of time before uh, this becomes ubiquitous, meaning that it will be available everywhere at a very low cost. Eu conversei aqui na TV Mocentro com o pesquisador Rutan Nushman. Ele é da Universidade da, do Sul da Califórnia, doutor em genética e câncer. Rutan, obrigado pela sua entrevista. Thank you very much. Thank you. A TV Bom Centro fica por aqui. Até a próxima oportunidade.